this is about targeting mechanical power to protect the lung and prevent villi. So these are my conflicts of interest, but they're not relevant for the talk. And I just want to guide you through. This is a, a historical uh, a concept. And if you think about the evolution of mechanical ventilation and uh, ventilator-induced lung injury, if you go from the left to the right, you can see essentially the evolution, the way we thought initially about um, gas exchange at all costs, uh, then targeting tidal volume, lung protective ventilation, meant low tidal volume ventilation, then the idea of PEEP, and then driving pressure from the 2015 New England Journal paper. But now we realize that things are a little bit more complex than single variables. Uh, they're all together to create a concept of energy. So, and this energy is, um, uh, uh, is essentially mechanical power. And this is one of the ideas that if you take a, a breath, every time you take a breath, whether it's spontaneous or mechanically ventilating, you're delivering energy to the respiratory system. And this energy is to uh, essentially expand the lung uh, to overcome the resistance. And then some of this energy uh, remains in the lung at the end of expiration. And this is a dissipation of energy that leads to inflammation and injury. So if you like formulas, this is time to look at this. If you don't, look away. But I think it's important because this is the equation of motion uh, that you're all familiar with, but is the fundamental to understand essentially mechanical power. And this is in yellow, you can see this is the elastic energy. So tidal volume multiplied by the elastance, you've got the resistance, and then you've got the, uh, the peep. And if you take every single um, component, you multiply each component by the tidal volume, you obtain work. So pressure times volume equal work. And if you take the work and you multiply by the respiratory rate, you obtain power. And that's the concept of mechanical power, because it takes all these components and condense them into one single element, which is the energy. And uh, Again, the energy is a bit morbid, what I put over there, because the energy can be either too little um, or, or it can be just enough to protect the lung or it can be excessive and this is dangerous. Now, if you think about the normal uh, concept of mechanical power, you can visualize, for those of you like me, they're quite visual, you can visualize in this diagram, you can have volume on your y-axis, I'll see I can do the laser over there, and you've got essentially pressure on the x-axis. So now what you can see is this, that you've got a plateau pressure over there, you can see, and if you add the resistance, you've got the peak pressure, so something that you're very familiar with. Now, if you take the, all the volume, that's the total inspiratory volume above the FRC. Now, if you take geometry and you start thinking about uh, the diagonal, uh, it's, uh, you look at the diagonal there, and you see this box, and you multiply essentially that little pressure, which is the peep, and you multiply by the tidal volume, you obtain the first element of this equation. Then you've got this triangle, and if you think what this triangle is, is a volume, uh, is, um, is a uh, half for the elastance because it's a triangle. And this one here, if you think about the pressure divided by the volume, that's essentially elastance. And then you've got your resistive component. So you can conceptualize in a geometrical fashion uh, what mechanical power is. Now, the way you can calculate it, it varies a lot. And don't get scared, we're not going through that. But just to say, there are so many formulas. Uh, and if you start from the classical one at the top to the very simplified that at the bottom, there are many, many ways. And they are all mathematically equivalent. So the question is, from a biological perspective, why do we care about mechanical power? Because the more mechanical power we give, uh, the, the greater the inflammation in the lung.
And that makes sense. Now, if you look back, uh, this one is a classic example in the 1970s where where the animals were ventilated with various levels of inspiratory pressure without PEEP, inspiratory pressure with PEEP, or a low uh, driving pressure. And you can see there that uh, if you have a lot of driving pressure there, 45, uh, that corresponds to really high mechanical power. And as the mechanical goes down, you can see that you've got alveolar edema, just perivascular edema and no damage. In other words, there seems to be an almost linear relationship between the level of energy transmitted to the lungs and the damage to the lung. Also, this is an experiment involving larger animals. So from small animal to larger animal, these are pigs. And you can see that as the mechanical power goes up, the lungs becomes heavier. So the fluid balance increases, the wedge pressure increases, and the PF ratio. Uh, uh, so the PF ratio also increases because the more pressure you give, the apparent PF ratio improves, but the lung becomes more uh, injured. And in the long term, this is damaging. So we go from the lab to the clinical situation. And if you can see on your left hand side, these are big databases, the MIMIC database, the EICU database. You can take thousands of patients' data. And when you look at that and you, and you see uh, 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 the correlation between survival or mortality and mechanical power, you can see that the higher the mechanical power, the higher the, the risk of mortality. And it seems to be a threshold where you can think about 17 or 19 joules per minute being a potential threshold for increased risk. But the area under the curve in this particular study was, um, was poor. But I would like you to show you this because hopefully will convince you to think less in terms of single parameter and more in terms of the global measure. Now look, on your left hand side, you've got a situation where you have low mechanical power. And on the right hand side, you've got high mechanical power. Now you can have low mechanical power with a high tidal volume. And you can see, even in the presence of high tidal volume, because the total energy is low, there is no increased risk of mortality. Equally, if you have a high driving pressure, but low total <coughs> mechanical power, again, no signal of change in, in terms of increased mortality. But the problem happens when you look at the high mechanical power. So high mechanical power, even if the tidal volume is small, because the respiratory rate is high, maybe because the PEEP is high, then the total uh, um, odds ratio for mortality increases. And you can see this concept in a variety of other papers. You can see that, that when you look at mechanical power, there is the hazard ratio increases with increased mechanical power. But this is not the case when you look at single elements, like necessarily the tidal volume or, or the respiratory rate. I'm sorry, apologies. And this is the same thing. So this shows that as the mechanical power increases with the same driving pressure, the hazard ratio for mortality increases. But when the mechanical power stays the same, the risk is the same. And you can do the same thoughts looking at driving pressure, tidal volume, and respiratory rate. The problem is that when you look at mechanical power, uh, there is, you can say, oh, this is a problem in the short term. But that doesn't seem to be the case because these are data uh, for three year follow up. And patients who had a high mechanical power greater than 20 or 22 joules per minute, even three years later, they have a worse outcome compared to the ones who had less energy delivered to their lungs. And uh, well, I'll show you this concept later. So this is regardless whether you are just ventilator, even if in patients who receive ECMO, so uh, potentially this being the most lung protective situation ever, you've got a threshold where if the mechanical power is higher, they normally have worse outcome compared to the uh, patients with lower, the, with lower mechanical power. 
This is a concept which I quite like. It's the idea that normally we take the view that we use baseline data to almost predict what happens three years later. The question is, what happens if this mechanical power changes over time? Is this important to the uh, outcome of the patient? Well, it seems to be that it is, because if you look at this um, graph here, this is change in mechanical power and change in delta pressure. So if the mechanical power changes, so becomes greater than zero, so in other words, mechanical power increases over time, you can see the, sub the survival probability in blue is lower compared to patients with the same mechanical power at the beginning, but with a decreasing mechanical power. And that makes sense to us clinically. If someone received a lot at the beginning, but it gets better, it was likely to have a better outcome. But this is about general mechanical power, so looking at pure joules per minute. But you would agree that not all lungs are the same. So we can deliver the same mechanical power to a small lung, very inju injured lung, or the same mechanical power to a big lung uh, and less injured. Maybe the outcome is not the same. And so this is a concept that has been studied, the concept of normalization of mechanical power. What does that mean? We take the pure number of mechanical power and we normalize it, we divide it for something that could be proxy measure of the severity of disease or the dimension of the lung. For example, body weight, predicted body weight, because in a way that relates to the size of the lung, not necessarily to the severity of the lung. Or this is a concept, mechanical power ratio. What does that mean? Looking at the mechanical power that the patient is getting compared to an ideal mechanical power for some with similar body characteristics, but normal lungs. And again, the same thing you can do in normalized with compliance or elastance, because that is a reflection of the functional residual capacity, etc. And you can see here, this is, for example, normalized for predicted body weight. And you can see mild ARDS, uh, moderate ARDS, and severe ARDS. And you can see that when you apply normalization, as the mechanical power per kilo increases, so does the probability of mortality for the severe and the moderate, but not for the mild. And that makes, uh, makes sense. So this is the idea of scaling to the mechanical power. You can see the same mechanical power, but if you deliver it to a large lung volume, so if you take mechanical power, you divide it per milliliter of FRC, clearly that milliliter of FRC increases as the uh, lung volume decreases. In other words, the severity increases. And this is quite interesting as well. You can see this is a standardized um, mechanical power based on FRC measured with CT scan. Now, this is another one in the last minute. I'm going to go a little bit faster here, but this is quite interesting. This is measured based on, uh, again, FRC. And you can see when you look at the patient from supine to prone, if the prone position improves aeration, in other words, the lung becomes bigger, then the mechanical power per milliliter, despite the total mechanical power being the same, but when you, when you normalize per milliliter, goes down, reflecting improvement in aeration. This is a study that shows essentially in patients who are not ventilated, but they are on non-invasive ventilation. If you take the mechanical power of patients receiving non-invasive ventilation compared to a normal mechanical power doing, during quiet breathing, for example, you can see that patients who had a mechanical power ratio or a mechanical power, you can say, 2.4 times greater than normal predicted, they were much more likely to deteriorate and be intubated.
So this is, if we go back to the lab, for example, you can see that the one in red uh, are, pe are animals with a, um, a mechanical power ratio that is greater than, uh, than, than 5. This is 4.5 in healthy animals. But you can see there almost seems to be a threshold. The lung can hold up to a certain point and then starts becoming uh, injured. And once it's injured, everything happens. The, the, the FRC decreases, the impedance decreases, the fluid balance goes up, and the edema goes up. And so this is the idea. Uh, you can see more dead space, more uh, pulmonary arterial pressure, greater fluid balance, and uh, the FRC goes down. So this is my final slide to say that mechanical ventilation is not one single variable. So we can't say low tidal volume, low PEEP or high PEEP is a recipe. And the recipe, you can put all these beautiful ingredients together and makes a very beautiful uh, situation. Or if you're like me, you put them together and this is a complete disaster. So I want to thank you for listening to me and how to make a good recipe is the job of the next two speakers. So thank you so much.